Delighted to say we're joined now by esteemed company, the European Championship winner. Jill Scott is with us. There she is, Jill. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. You're in North London today. First up, tell us what you're up to. Yeah, hello, everybody. Yeah, so I'm here with Starland Bank today, um, just kind of helping them launch their initiative where we're talking about kind of keeping girls in football. There's a massive drive at the minute on the back of the Lionesses' success to get girls into football, but Starland Bank did a lot of research into girls staying in football and found out that they were three times more likely to drop out of football at a certain age. So I'm here with them today. Um, one of kind of the big problems that Starland were finding was body image with girls. So they've pledged £200,000 to invest in new kits, equipment, coaching courses, just to try and make the game a little bit better so that we can see an increase in the amount of girls staying in the game as well as joining the game. Yeah. Uh, thankfully, you, you weren't one of those who, who dropped out at that age. Um, <laughs> you stay. What, what do you think was the difference for you? And therefore, you bring actually unique insight into this, don't you? Yeah, I think it's more difficult for girls nowadays. Obviously, I think there is a bit of a stigma around how girls should look, um, stuff about like Instagram and social media and always wanting to kind of look a certain way, whereas I was a bit of a tomboy. I loved getting stuck in on the football pitch. I didn't mind how I looked, as you can probably tell still now. Um, so I think it's just about kind of telling girls that it's OK to get out there, stay physically active and really introducing them to the benefits of exercise as well, mental health. Health is such a big one at the minute um, and just kind of staying fit and healthy. But, yeah, I fell in love with this game and I'm still in love with it as well. Yeah, and long may it last. So obviously, the, the, the growth of, of the WSL and it continues to grow. Is that, is that a key factor? How important is that for girls to get involved at that age for the lower levels of the game to keep playing? Yeah, it really is. I think the growth of the WSL, especially in recent years, we're seeing 50,000 people heading to the Emirates to watch watch Arsenal, the same watching Manchester City at the Etihad. And I think that growth just means that the girls can then have that opportunity to be household names, Lucy Bronze, Chloe Kelly, Kira Walsh, and then young girls can see that dream. I never really could see female players playing, so it was hard to have a dream that didn't exist. But now these young girls have got them fabulous lionesses to look up to. To. And that's kind of another thing that might have made them think about dropping out because they couldn't clearly see that pathway. But now, thanks to the Lionesses, they're providing dreams for these young girls. Yeah, let's talk about the Lionesses then, shall we? We're a couple of weeks removed now from that World Cup final. You've, you've had time to process it all. I, I guess there's two ways of looking at it. An, an amazing achievement to get to the final or an opportunity missed in those 90 minutes. Which, which one was it? Yeah, I think finishing second, what a fantastic achievement. I think if we'd spoke about that going into the tournament, um, I think obviously the girls would have been really, really happy to, to finish second in the world. Yeah, they're always going to think about the what if, but you know what, the Lionesses are, are true role models. I'm like the biggest fan now that I've retired. I think one of the biggest kind of moments for me in my head was after that final. Um, the girls obviously feeling probably as down as they've ever felt in sport, losing a World Cup final and I witnessed them all take the boots off, sign them and go around the crowd and give them to young girls and I think that goes to show the role models that they are, the humble, the grounded, the talented um, and yeah, it's just fantastic that these young girls, first of all that England now expect to be in finals, that's two finals in two years for the Lionesses and I think it's just fantastic what they're doing. Yep, it's just over a week now until Serena Wiegmann selects her team for the upcoming Nations League fixture. Are you expecting a similar squad there? Yeah, I think it will be similar. I think Serena's kind of someone, she's got a plan in her head. She never seems to kind of deviate away from it. She doesn't seem to panic if there's injury, stuff like that. And I think that's why Serena is so great. She doesn't tend to waste our energy panicking on things. She just has such a logical approach. So, yeah, I think it'll be, be a similar team. And, yeah, I think everybody will be so excited to see the Lionesses return. Stadium of Light, Sunderland, I can't wait. I've got my tickets um, for the 22nd of September. 
September. Wonderful. Uh, I, I wonder what it would be like for the squad to get back together. Will, it, will there be that sense of disappointment? Will there be a hangover or will they be desperate just to pick themselves up and crack on again? Yeah, it's quite difficult for the girls, to be honest, after a heavy season, then having the World Cup <clears throat> and then having an international fixture soon after. But I think sometimes for these girls, you, you just want to get to that next game. Um, I know they'll all be excited to meet up with each other. They've got kind of a great group. Um, they get on very well, so I think they'll be excited about that. But, yeah, it, it is tough. I think hopefully they've had a bit of a rest period, got to see the family and the friends, and they'll be raring to go again. Uh, if, if we needed proof, and I don't think we did, uh, what we've seen since is not only is Serena Wiegmann uh, a wonderful exponent uh, with her decisions on the pitch, but an, an amazing human being off it as well. The, her, her speech when she picked up the UEFA Coach of the Year award was uh, incredible to behold, really. Um, my, my biggest fear, though, and do you share it, is, is that uh, England can't keep her on board. How important is it? Uh, to keep her in that job? Oh, it's so important, so important. The Lionesses need Serena. But you know what? I think Serena really, really enjoys the job as well. Um, I know that she loves all the staff and the way that the FA help the team. She loves all the players. So, yeah, we, we need to keep her. But my heart says that I think she'll definitely stay because I think she feels like this is her family now. Um, she's done a fantastic job. And, yeah, England needs Serena. Let's talk some WSL issues. Season now less than a month from kicking off. Transfer window is still open uh, until the 14th of September. There's been a lot of movement. Which team's moves have caught your eye? Oh, yeah, there has. There's been, been quite a lot. Manchester City signed um, Jill Ward, which will be a, a great signing for them. She'll add a bit of physicality to that midfield. Alessia Russo going from Manchester United to Arsenal. I've seen a few clips of her training in Arsenal kit. Um, it's hard to get your head around because you see her as that Man United player. Obviously, Emma Hayes has recruited heavily as well and already has some great players. So, yeah, it's going to be an exciting season. I think I witnessed Lauren James uh, score a goal about two days ago in pre-season, 30-yarder, top corner, so I'm sure she'll be back doing great things as well. But, yeah, if young girls, young boys want role models and need to watch the, the WSL this season, so I think it's going to be the best yet. Until um, nine days to go, until that window closes, rumours in the media that Arsenal may not stop there, uh, their pursuit of Mary Earps from Manchester United. Wow. Uh, do you see that one coming off? What a move that would be. Yeah. Yeah, it would be it would be a big move. Um, if you ask us, and I, I'm just answering honestly, I, I think she'd stay at Man United. I think she enjoys her time there. She's done fantastically well. You can see that with each game for England, each game with clubs, she just keeps getting better and better. So yeah, I would I would see no reason why she would move. Um, I could be wrong, but yeah, if you ask us, I would probably say my opinion is we'll see her as a Manchester United goalkeeper this season. October the 1st is the date all, all WSL teams are back in action. Which team are you most looking forward to seeing this season? Oh, all of them, to be honest. Uh, Manchester City, Arsenal, Man United, Chelsea. Um, I've also got a soft spot for Aston Villa. I enjoyed I had a short loan spell there, but I think they had a fantastic season last season. Rachel Daly winning the PFA Player of the Year award. She was absolutely incredible, and I think they keep building in the right way. So can they cause some upsets this season? But, yeah, I think all the teams are improving all the time, so it's going to be an exciting year. Yeah, you'd like to see them break into that title race. Chelsea, obviously, have won the last four WSL titles. We've had an incredible, though, four-way title race last year. Um, I've thrown Villa into the picture as well. It, 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 who's going to clinch it? <laughs> Honestly, it's so close to call. I'd, I really couldn't stand to even say which team. I think you'll see your front runners of um, Arsenal, Chelsea, Man City... Man United and then, yeah, who knows from there. But I do think, as you say, Aston Villa could break into that. I think they've trusted the process with the recruitment, the way that they've built the team. But, yeah, I think certainly them four will be battling it out. Jill, it's been wonderful to speak to you. Uh, enjoy your day in North London. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.